Hold it. I think you're going to like this picture. Love That Bob. Starring Bob Cummings. You tell your Uncle oh. Bob if he isn't downstairs in two minutes, I'm going to clear the breakfast table. But, Mom... And remind him he promised to go to the market and get me a turkey. But, Mom, can't he help me with my homework first? Homework? Uncle Bob? Yeah, he's been helping me every weekend. Chemistry, psychology, English composition. This morning, it's business administration. Uncle Bob? <laughs> you know that. Come here, you great. Big, wonderful, handsome, devoted uncle. Oh, morning, morning. I'm going to hold your breakfast for you till you're ready. Well, thank you. <laughs> and the turkey can wait too. Thank you. I'm having breakfast with a turkey. <laughs> you're picking one up at the market. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm ready for your lecture, Uncle Bob. Hey, I. What lecture? Oh, that, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, wh wh what's my subject for this morning, sir? Uh, uh, diversification of investment. Diversification of investment. Okay, you ready? Ready. Um, never invest all your money in one girl. <laughs> no, girls are like stocks, Chuck. The, uh, the wise investor never puts all of his money into one company. He, he spreads it around. That way, if one of his stocks starts to cool off, he always has a couple of others ready to pay dividends. Yeah, I dig you, Uncle Bob. A and Chuck. Yeah, I'll get it. Hello? Hello, darling. I just called to say thank you again for last night. The girl you were with last night. Marion, you now. This is Gwendolyn. <laughs> One of my stocks is dropping. <laughs> Who's Marion? Uh, uh, Gwendolyn, honey, you, you, you didn't quite let me finish. What I started to say was, Marion Udall would be a dream come true. Oh, Bob. I can be packed for our honeymoon in five minutes. I'm self. Uh, well, and honey, you still didn't quite let me finish. What I started to say was, marrying you, doll, would be a dream come true if I weren't leaving for Turkey. Leaving for Turkey? Oh, Bob, when? Well, right after breakfast. How long will it be? How long will it be? Uh, just a second. Chuck, your mother said the turkey would weigh 20 pounds. Yeah. Did she say how long it would be? <laughs> uh, sorry, honey, the whole thing's indefinite. Oh, gee, Bob, I'm going to miss you. Oh, I hope so. I'm going to miss you, too. Will you write? Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Isn't she sweet? Here, Chuck, let me write something. Avoid Gwendolyn. Put that on my dresser. Okay, Uncle Bob. Boy, that was a great lesson in how to brush off a girl. Dispose of the stock. Yeah. <laughs> she wanted to get married, huh? Naturally. You know what that's like? It's like buying into a company and then working for it the rest of your life. And that's no way to play the market, Chuck. <laughs> I think we're in for a crash. <laughs> So these are the lectures you've been getting, Margaret, huh? Let, 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 now, Mom, Mom the, the Chemistry. Show. Never mix a blonde with a redhead. Oh, Margaret. Now, wait a minute. Please. English composition. British girls are built as good as any others. Wait, wait a minute, Margaret. Now, Mom, oh, here's one. Not... Physical education. Find out if a girl knows judo before you get physical. <laughs> Here's your turkey. Well, I, I got a little larger one than you ordered. Oh, nice. Because I'm bringing Doris home. Why? Now, Margaret, look, after 18 holes of golf, it'll cost me a fortune to take her out. Besides, I don't want to run into Gwen. Well, I'll see you about six. You'll see me right now. About what? Chuck. Oh, Margaret, look, I'm teeing off in 30 minutes. I'm but... already teed off. Here, make yourself useful. Oh, this but... business of your bad influence on Chuck has got to stop. Oh, for Bob. Pete's sake, Margaret, Chuck's old enough to learn about girls. Not the course he... you teach. And besides, I don't want him to have your attitude toward women. Let me tell you something. I may have played the field, yes, but I played it fairly and honorably. Oh. I have never lied to a woman. You've never I lied have never to a deceived woman. one. You've never. <laughs> oh, 
house. What's all this about you going to Turkey? <laughs> what? Well, this girl named Gwen came bawling into the office and said the boss couldn't marry her because he was leaving for Turkey. I thought you didn't lie. I didn't. I left for Turkey, I brought it back, and there it is. <laughs> you are a rat. But a single rat. <laughs> Schultz, I'll leave it to you. Is this the kind of a man that should be influencing my son? I'm sorry, Mark. I always make it a point never to interfere in the affairs of another family. Listen, if you're a smart girl. Come on, boss. Let's make it all one Schultz, family. Schultz, you relax. <laughs> you want to get married. I do, too. You mean you're willing to do housework? I love it. Here, have yourself a ball. Can we skip something there? Like the honeymoon? Martin, oh, <laughs> Schultz, you're not allowed to say things like that in the house when Chuck is here. His mother wishes to keep him innocent. All right. Oh, great doctor he's going to be. The first patient that comes in and says, I want an examination, he'll say, OK, strip to the neck. <laughs> oh, go play golf. Chuck will be a fine doctor, and no thanks to you. Margaret, I don't care what you say. Chuck is old enough to learn about women. He's, <laughs> he's got a point there, Mom. Look, Chuck. Hi, Miss Schultz. Hi, Doc. I thought I told you to study. No, I can learn more in here. Back to your book. Oh, Mom, I Chuck. know you think Uncle Bob's a bad influence on me, but he isn't. Thanks, Chuck. I have a mind of my own. Yeah. Well, take it upstairs and study with it. Mom, I'm sorry. But there comes a time in every fellow's life when he takes a giant step from boyhood to manhood and makes his own decisions about his relationship with girls. I... <laughs> How's it go from there, Uncle Bob? <laughs> This way. You see, Schultze, what kind of an influence he is? Margaret, there me... goes a boy who hopes to be a doctor. Does he look up to Louis Pasteur, Joseph Lister, Walter Reed? No. Him! Well, at least he looks up. Well, he has to. Most of the time, you're on Mulholland. Listen. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you something. If you spend a little more time on Mulholland, you might not be so emotionally throttled. Will you tell me what he meant by that? Yes, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll take it up on Mulholland and find out for you. I'll tell you. Schultz, he's down. <laughs> Guess I'll tell you what I meant by that. If you recognize the fact that your son has grown up and left the nest, you might channel your possessiveness and love instincts into other and more helpful outlets. Thank you, Sigmund Freud. You're welcome, Mother Hubbard. <laughs> Mother Hubbard! Yes! Yeah. me! My family never finds my cupboard bare. There's always plenty of food. Of which you are the chief consumer? What? If you get out of the kitchen and into the world, your mind might broaden instead of your... Right! <laughs> what you need is a man. If you get off the griddle and into a girdle, you might catch one, too. <laughs> have you know the health club said that in one month they'd give me the figure of an 18-year-old girl? The health... Well, don't take it. You'll only stretch it out of shape like you're doing to this one. <laughs> Left the... Oh, Chuck, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, Chuck, this is, uh, this is Miss uh, Monroe. Hello, Chuck. <laughs> Miss Monroe, may I say that you're even more beautiful than your famous namesake? Uh, Chuck is my nephew. Uh, you didn't have to tell me. Tell me. <laughs> uh, where's your mother? Upstairs getting dressed. She's got a date. A date? Oh, really? Oh, that, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, sit down, won't you, Doris, dear? Um, would... Um, uh, <laughs> you aren't going to hang around, are you? <laughs> I'm stuck. I got no wheels. The car's in the driveway. You out of money? Just temporarily. I'm expecting some. <laughs> That's what I was expecting. <laughs> His jacket sure would look swell with these slacks. <laughs> Anything else? Wow. Well, Stage <laughs> 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 <laughs>
just a little fun with, with Chuck. <laughs> I, I better go say goodbye to Margaret. Oh, would you like to start setting the table for two? No, oh, I'll say I'm famished. Famished, yeah. <laughs> Like. Oh, Margaret, it's just terrific, terrific. <laughs> Thank you. You'll get the bill later. You know, I don't care, because you look like a million dollars tax free. Oh. <laughs> well, that reminds me, I'll need some money. <laughs> some mad money? No, I'm not mad. <laughs> Margaret, do you, do you need all the money? Oh, it took almost everything I could scrape together for the fees. Uh -huh. And Pierre will need something for entertainment tonight. But you see, I... Pierre. Oh, Bobby, so charming and continental. Uh -huh. I picked him just like that. Uh -huh. A little more expensive than the others, but worth it. Margaret, you, you didn't hire a gigolo. Oh, Bob, they prefer to be called escorts. Margaret. I'm just channeling my possessiveness and my love instincts into other and more healthful outlets. For the gigolo? I can't believe this, Margaret. Shh, there he is. Look. Margaret, I don't like this. Relax, he's bonded. Bob, <laughs> Oh, yes, Doris. Bonjour, Pierre. Bob? Doris, I'll be there in just a second. Margaret. Bob. Yes, Doris, I'll be... <laughs> you are a doll. Merci beaucoup. Are you doll the friends you know? <laughs> Those are waiting, so let's go play bridge. <laughs> What do you mean there isn't any turkey? There isn't any anything. Come see for yourself. What? Look, I brought the turkey. Oh. <laughs> I brought the turkey. <laughs> well, what happened? Mm, that's what I'd like to know. And who is Mother Hubbard? Old Mother Hubbard cleaned out her cupboard, sold everything that was there, deserted her griddle, cinched up her middle, and was having a blast with Pierre. Did you find any money? I just... No. Well, that's just great maroon. No car, no food, oh, no money. Doris, honey, look. And we'll have none of that either. Doris, look... Well, I've had guys try and get me high to kiss me or strong arm me into a kiss. But you're the first one that ever tried to starve me into Oh, for heaven's sake, can't you forget about food for a moment? Yeah. There. Now get me something to eat. How? I don't even have cab fare. Well, then hitchhike someplace where your credit's good. Look, if you just be... Where are you calling? Brown Derby. I forgot I've got a credit card. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, this is Bob Collins at 3600 Wrightwood Drive. C could we order some food out? Yes, to be sent out right away? Thank you. Uh, Let's see, a uh, shrimp cocktail? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, two. Mm -hmm. And uh, Caesar salad? Yeah, oh, and two very large steaks. Uh, charred and rare. Oh, uh, well, let's see, uh, broccoli hollandaise, a couple of baked potatoes, and Sherry's Jubilee. Yeah, how's that sound? Oh, fine, I'll have the same. She'll have the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could dance with you all night. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Take it right in here. He'll handle it, honey. I'll go wash my hands. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would you like us to serve you? Oh, no, no, I'll do that. Just open the champagne while I uh, sign the check. Fix it. Yeah. Thanks. You have a credit card? You bet. I'm afraid it's, it's, um, uh, in my wallet, which is in my jacket, which is on my nephew, which isn't here. <laughs> you could pay cash? Uh, yes. Yes, I could, if I had any. <laughs> no cash? No credit card? Oh, oh, it's all right. I know Bob Cobb, you see. I know uh, Bob Cobb, too, and if I don't bring back the money, I get fired. I'm sorry. No, wait, I can sign it. See, he'll, Bob Cobb will understand, please. Wait, wait a minute, fellas. What are we going to do about... Oh, Bob, I don't know when I've been so hungry in, in, uh, 
<laughs> Bob, where's the, the food? <laughs> oh, oh, funny thing. I, I, uh, I sent it back. The, the steaks were just a, a little too rare. <laughs> Rob, Bob, I... Listen, wait, 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 very, very nourishing. What kind of greens? Uh, uh, fresh greens, yes. I, uh, I picked them myself. Tonight? Yes. Yes, they grow right outside the back door. Well, <laughs> he's funny. You first. Shall we finish him up? Oh, you did? Bob, you really shouldn't have given me yours. Oh, that's the least I could do. After... Yeah, that's Chuck with my car. And my wallet. Now we can go out and have those steaks. Well, Bob, I don't think I could eat one. I'm full of greens right up to here. You, you really liked those, didn't you? Well, they were a little bitter, but they did fill me up. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Bob? Yes, sir. Look, somebody broke off all Mom's geraniums. <laughs> Audrey! <laughs> For heaven's sake, 10 o'clock in the morning, I find you're still lying in bed. Last night when I got home, I found you lying on the kitchen floor. If you could... <laughs> That's different. I got crowned with a geranium pot. <laughs> Margaret, how about some breakfast? No, thanks. I'm dieting. <laughs> how about me? Not a bad idea. You're paunching up just to eat to get... How about me getting the food? A good idea. You can get it at the drugstore. They have a delicious number three. And you can Margaret... bring back some coffee and orange juice for me. Listen to me. Hello? Bonjour, Pierre. You're going to have trouble with me. I'm not coming. Oh, mon grand travail beau. Mon camarade très gay. Mon charmant, élégant, ravissant, joli, joli, Pierre. I thought you were going to have breakfast. Who could eat after listening to that? Pardon, Pierre. Continuez-vous. I take it Monsieur Lavasse is getting an earful. Oui? Tonight? But of course, Pierre, what would you like to do? Pierre, please. <laughs> oh, Pierre. Pierre, you naughty, naughty boy. <laughs> Margaret, what does he want to do? None of your business. Look, I'm paying for it, and I want to know. Pardon, <laughs> Pierre. Oh, I'm so glad you reminded me. I'll need 50 for tonight. Not a chance. This gigolo's gotten his last buck out of me. I'm oh, sorry, Pierre, I have to hang up now. <laughs> I have to call a girl named Gwendolyn and tell her that my brother did not go to Turkey. <laughs> uh, I'll, uh, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> Is that Bert, Margaret? Oh, did it. You should have seen him scurry out of here to get the money. Yeah, okay. Oh, hey, I got it. Oh, I'll call and see if Carol can get her dad's car. I haven't got a chance of getting Uncle Bob's again. <laughs> oh, if the boss ever finds out that I'm Pierre. Shorty, wait. What's that? It sounded like someone picked up an extension. If it's you know who, we're in you know what. <laughs> I'll say, we're in real. Here's the money, Margaret. Relax, Pierre, darling. See you tonight. All clear. <laughs> Uh, 
expect to get your feet off the table. Uncle Bob, would you like to buy some information? No. But I know who Pierre is. So do I. He's the most expensive gigolo in this town. I said to get your feet off the table. <coughs> Pierre isn't a gigolo at all. He's a she, and you know her. <laughs> Coffee? Yeah. I, I interrupted you. You know, Carol sure did enjoy riding around in your car last night. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got it again tonight, Chuck. <laughs> and boy, did she flip over that sport jacket. <laughs> You've got that, too. And, of course, that ten spot. <laughs> Word of honor, Chuck. Every cent I've got. Just this change? Your mother just took me for 50 bucks. Oh. Well, here's the information. Pierre is none other than Schultz. Just a minute. This isn't going to be another hungry evening at home. Word of honor. Is that Pierre? No, Margaret. It's my date. Bob. Honey, in just a few minutes, you're going to have more fun than you've ever had in your whole life. Well, what are we going to do after we eat? We're... <laughs> no, I get this situation. We're going to double date with my sister and a gigolo. What? Yeah. Except she doesn't know that I know that the gigolo is really Schultze in disguise. Schultze at the office? And with us along... I've got it, Bob. Oh, Pierre. Bonsoir. <laughs> yeah, you're so continental, kissing my hand. <laughs> Oh, Bob! Good night. Margaret, uh, we're, uh, we're coming along. What? Doris and I are, are double dating with you. Oh, well, uh, what about Chelsea? <laughs> yeah, what about Chelsea? <laughs> well, she was upstairs helping me get dressed. We can't just leave her here alone. Oh, that's right, we can't. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll tell Chelsea that we're leaving. Oh, uh, Chelsea, we're leaving. Be right down, Bob! Night, boss. Doris, hurry! Margaret, Margaret, wait a minute! Margaret, don't, don't! <laughs> They seem to have driven off with us. <laughs> and I suppose your nephew has the car again tonight? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the jacket with the wallet in the pocket? <laughs> oh, Doris, where are you going? And look, Doris. Do Doris, what are you doing? Honey, you don't have to put that big heavy log in the fireplace. Look, it's a... Doris, Doris, be careful. <laughs> That's dangerous. Yeah. Shorty and I will hop out at the double feature movie. <laughs> oui, oui, Mama. <laughs> Gee, Chuck, it sure was swell of you to tip us off that the boss was wise. It certainly was, especially as your Uncle Bob would have paid plenty of money not to tell. Ah, oh, heck, Mom. Money isn't everything. I may be flat broke, but I'd rather do what I feel is right. Well, now, I think that attitude deserves a reward. Reward? Mom, you mean you, you've got money with you? Yes, I got it from your Uncle Bob. Really? I'm going to give you half. Twenty dollars. Twenty-five. I thought so. You see what kind of an influence his Uncle Bob is on him? No, 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 he isn't, Mom. No, he is not. I'll take the twenty. <laughs> Fifteen. Ten. <laughs> about a quarter for a hamburger. <laughs>